Hey guys, it's Issy the Medic. Welcome back to my channel. I just like to say thank you all so much for the response on like my first video. Like it was amazing and I'm so happy that you guys were inspired and it's something I want to continue to do. So please like and subscribe and turn your notifications on for when my videos are coming. So today I'm going to be talking to you guys about how I scored in the top 9% in the UCAT. Um, however, this is going to be in a two part video. So in today's video, I'm going to talk about some tips when it comes to preparing for the UCAT. And then I'm going to break into some tips and tricks for the first three sections of the exam. And these three sections are the verbal reasoning, the decision making and the quantitative reasoning sections. The UCAT is something I have struggled with. This was actually my third time taking the exam. And for those of you guys who have struggled with it in the past, believe me, you can improve and you can get better. Before I get right into it, I'm going to talk to you guys a little bit about what the UCAT actually is. So the UCAT is an aptitude test used by medical and dental schools to help with their selection process and to help pick out the applicants, basically. The UCAT consists of five sections. The first section is the verbal reasoning section, which tests your ability to sort of evaluate written information. The second section is decision making, which tests your ability to sort of look at complex information and draw conclusions from it and things like that. The third section is quantitative reasoning, which tests your ability to um, evaluate numerical data. The fourth section is abstract reasoning, which basically looks at whether you can pick up patterns from complex information and form relationships between them. And the final section is the situational judgment test, which tests, you know, your people skills. So whether you have empathy, um, listening, teamwork. So the first four sections are scored between 300 and 900. And according to the medic portal, the average score last year for the sections was 620. And they said that 650 is considered a good score and a score over 680 is a high score. The situational judgment section, however, is scored between a band one and a band four. And medical schools like to see that you have at least a band two in that section. So getting a band two or band one is considered good. So what did I score on the UCAP? In the verbal reasoning section, I scored 600. In the decision making section, I scored 730. In the quantitative reasoning section, I scored 630. And in the abstract reasoning section, I scored 860. This gave me a total of 2,820 or 705 as a average. And I scored a band two in the six situational judgment test. And these scores put me in the top 10% in UCAT. So what did I use to prepare for the UCAT? I used Medify. I felt like this changed the game for me. Um, however, I had to kind of close my eyes because it when I was purchasing it because it was costly. But yeah, I recommend before you buy it, you consider the, the, you know, the price of it. I've dropped the link below and, you know, it should appear somewhere here with the prices. But yeah, um, I loved it because it was an electronic resource and it only made sense because the exam is electronic. So I felt like I was way more comfortable going into the exam than I was in previous years because I had, you know, been practicing with questions, exam style, exam conditions. For me, it's all about conditioning my mind and my body to get used to it. So yeah, this is why I recommend Medify. I also use the 1250 UCAT book. Um, however, this was only like when I was on the bus or something like that, or when I was out in the garden and wanted to do something. But most of the time I was on Medify because it tracks your progress and everything like I thought it was fantastic so yeah I definitely recommend you check it out and like I said before the link is down below. I spent around six weeks preparing for the UCAT about two to four hours ish um, per day Monday to Friday and I did some on the weekends when I felt like it and that was because personally I needed a bit of a break and I didn't want to get burnt out so yeah, I kind of gave myself 
two to four hours, maybe sometimes longer, depending on how into it I was. So yeah, um, for those of you who are wondering, that's how long I took pre to prepare. I recommend giving yourself enough time, uh, at least four weeks, just so you get the hang of things, really. That's my tip. I know, I know you've probably heard this a thousand times, but practice, practice. This was one of the major differences this time for me, was the fact that I practiced so much more this time. I don't think I've ever practiced for the UCAT like I have, like this, well, last year. I'm telling you, there are times where you're going to think, am I ever going to get this? Like, this is long, my brain hurts. But I'm telling you, hang in there, you will get it and things will start to click for you. I'm going to say this, but yeah, identify your weaknesses and do not avoid them. This is something I was guilty of in the past was like, mm, I'm not going to do verbal reasoning. I'm not going to do abstract reasoning. Let me do my other two sections that I like. No. No, because if you don't work on the weaker sections, it's very difficult for your score to boot, like to, for you to boost your score. So yeah, don't run away from it. I know that it may feel tiring and you know, and you may feel like, you know, I'm not getting it. But the more you learn the techniques for the exam, the better you'll get at it. Trust me, like keep going. One thing that you know, I think helped me was that if I got a question wrong, I'd go back to it at the end and have a look at the question, have a look at the explanations. This is because when you rectify a problem and you nip it in the bud, you're less likely to make the same mistake when you come back to it again. One thing that really helped me was doing the mock tests in exam conditions. I started off doing mock tests like once a week, then closer to the exam, I started to increase how many times I was doing that. That was because it got me used to, it got me conditioned to sort of get used to being in an exam environment. So yeah, I recommend doing this. For some reason in the past, I just didn't do mock tests in exam conditions and I felt like that really affected my confidence going into the exam. Um, the official UCAT website, they have some mock tests online which I've linked below. Medify also has like a fantastic bank of questions, they have so many questions, a lot of mock tests. Personally, I did not time myself from the get-go and this was because I needed to get my head around a technique before I started timing myself. I just didn't see any point in trying to put time pressure on myself when I didn't know what I was doing. So yeah, I recommend that you try and get your head around a technique, learn about the exam first before you dive into going straight into time conditions. And this way it makes the revision more enjoyable as well. So yeah, this is something I recommend. I'm now gonna go through a few tips and tricks for the verbal reasoning, decision making, and quantitative reasoning section. And guys, if you found this video useful in any way, don't forget to like and subscribe, and please leave any comments if there's anything you want me to go through further. Please stay tuned for the rest of the video. I can't really stress how much I don't like this section, like, yeah. But honestly, I was so happy with my score in this section, considering the fact that I was so, so nervous, like, at the beginning of the exam. Uh, so I felt like this, affected my score in a section a little bit because I actually was scoring higher in the practices than I did on the actual exam. So I'm going to talk to you a little bit about a few tips and tricks to improve your verbal reasoning score. I'm going to tell you something I wish I would have done and this is reading like historical texts, things from newspapers and that. If you're somebody like me who doesn't, he's not really into all those things, it really helps to like you know, get your brain sort of used to reading weird things. I feel like this will strengthen your score because you won't be so taken aback by all the weird things that they're on about in that section. I recommend actually not reading the text beforehand. This is because you can get bogged down in trying to understand the text. And to be honest, you do not have that much time in the exam to be trying to understand the text. Go to the question first look for keywords in that question. Keywords are usually names, places, and dates. And then scan for those keywords in the text. And you scan the whole text. Don't just stop when you found the keyword because it could appear somewhere else later in the text. 
and this can help you answer the question. So yeah, scan for that word throughout the text, read the sentence before and afterwards, and that should give you the answer to that question. When it comes to the true, false, and can't tell questions, you need to be careful when it like with what it actually means. So true means that that statement is confirmed by the text. The text literally needs to confirm the statement. False means that that text actually contradicts the statement. And can't tell means that that phrase is not confirmed or contradicted by the text. Basically, that phrase is like out, mm, how would I describe it? It's just like a bit random. So if there's a text talking about women's football and women's football only, and then it says in the phrase, oh yeah, men are better than women at football, that's, you can't tell that because the information actually isn't in the text. So yeah, this is one thing that you need to be careful with, knowing the difference between can't tell and false. Identify the long-winded questions and skip them. Honestly, the more you practice, the more you'll kind of know which questions are long-winded. For example, if you're trying to look from a keyword in the question and it's not in the text, yeah, those ones are going to take a while. So find an app, pick an answer, flag and move on. Don't be scared to move on. Don't be scared to skip. Um, that's going to save you a lot of time so that you can come back to questions at the end and spend like your last minutes trying to answer those. Use your finger to track on the computer. Um, this means that your brain's not doing as much work trying to like find words. If you have your finger placed near the screen, then you can sort of see what you're doing, see the words you're looking for. It's more like a like an active way of finding key words. So don't be afraid to like, you know, do all this. Don't be afraid. It's going to help you track the words and things like that. Now I'm going to talk about the decision making section. Uh, I've got some tips for it. Don't, don't apply prior knowledge to this part. This is because a lot of the things that you have to draw conclusions from and things like that, they're bizarre. And if you try to apply a prior knowledge, it could affect the way you answer the questions. So yeah, be careful with applying prior knowledge to um, the questions in this section. Don't be afraid to draw things out. Honestly, a lot of the things in this section of logical puzzles where they give you a set of clues and you sort of have to, for example, find out where people are sitting on a round table. Draw the round table on a piece of paper. Fill things in. Give the paper some of the work to do. It's really hard to figure things out when it's all in your head. So drawing things out will give you a more enjoyable and just an easier experience in the section. Like I would say for the quantitative reasoning section, I also recommend that you learn your basic GCSE maths, um, in particular probability, um, because you get questions on probability and um, looking at numerical and scientific data. This is because um, some of the questions require you to, you know, check whether certain conclusions can be drawn from a set of data. So getting yourself familiar with these techniques can really help you with the exam. So I'm now going to talk about the quantitative reasoning section and some tips and techniques that help me improve my score. I've literally just said this, but I need to stress it. Learn your basic maths equations, the basic GCSE maths equations. Even though some of the data may look complex, most of the questions require you to know and apply it to these basic equations. These are things like percentage change, ratio and proportion, speed, distance, time, looking at geometry, so things like area, perimeter, volume. I think I may have missed things out whilst I'm saying it, but I will list, make a list around here of the things that you like need to know. But yeah, um, knowing that is important. Mental maths, mental maths. That will come with practice though. Um, I wish my mental maths was better because honestly, it saves time on the calculator. That calculator is a big time waster. So, 
doing things as much as you can in your head within reason yeah doing things as much as you can in your head will save time and yeah in a sense will improve your score do not get bogged down with all the data there do not like before you've even read the question don't start saying oh let me understand the data because this is just going to waste time and a lot of the time some of the most important information is in the question so yeah look at the data okay look there's a table or there's a bar graph then move on to your question because the only way you're going to be able to get the questions right is if you actually read the question properly so yeah try not to get overly like excited about all the data there because you know it you need to save time in the exam beware of units when you're calculating things the amount of times when i was practicing i just you know, made silly mistakes with not converting units or calculating things that were in completely different units. So make sure you're keeping an eye out for units because that's a key thing in the exam. They quite like unit conversion and things like that. So keep an eye out. Be careful. Thank you for watching part one of my UCAP video. I really hope that you guys have found it useful. Don't forget to like and subscribe and also leave any comments below if there's anything that you want me to go through further and if there's any questions that you have. Please turn your notifications on because part two is coming soon. And yeah, you guys are doing well. Keep going, keep grinding. Things will eventually click. Good luck with your studying. Bye.